Hey y'all, Jen Hernandez, Loan with Jen. We are gonna to talk today about how to read a loan estimate. We will be right back. Okay, we're back. Please like, share, and subscribe. My channel has over 200 videos about buying, selling, refinancing. Uh, we want you to be informed and empowered to make the best decision for you. Really, I release two videos a week. Okay, how to read a loan estimate. So the loan estimate is what in the past, the form was called a good faith estimate. Good faith estimate is an old term. It no longer applies. Back in 2008 with the finance reform, the form was changed. And so it's now called a loan estimate. So it is the initial disclosure that the uh, uh, lender must give you once, once you've engaged with them uh, and you've made full application, and especially once you're under contract and have a property, they have to disclose a loan estimate to you. So it's something that's formal um, and we're gonna go over how to read it. So there's three pages on the loan estimate. Now the, the info that I'm giving you is also, there's a great site. It's the consumerfinance.gov site. So you can get there by going to consumerfinance.gov backslash owning a home backslash loan estimate. So we're gonna flash that here on the screen. It's a great consumer site and it's got all these questions that I'm gonna go over. So I've got my cheat sheets here. So the first thing you wanna do is look on page one. So page one is really a summary of information. Um, you wanna starting at the top, you wanna check your name, make sure that things are spelled. This is where it's gonna have your loan type, the number of years, there's also a little section that says, is this rate locked? That's really, really important. Um, we do a lot of disclosure in the beginning where the rate is not locked yet because you don't have a property. So rates cannot be locked until you have a property. So that a lot of times that says not locked. Now, once you're under contract and you officially lock with the, the lender, this will change and it will say locked and then it'll have an expiration date. So you have to close on your home prior to that date, okay? Now, is, the, is the, the price and the loan amount what you were expecting? So you need to look at that. That's all in this top section. Um, on the interest rate, there is a, um, a sample that says, is it fixed or adjustable? I can tell you that there's hardly any adjustable loans anymore. It's, very, it's not common at all. This most likely will say fixed for you. Um, and that is under a section, um, uh, there under the interest rate, it says, can this amount increase after closing? No, that would mean it's not adjustable, okay? So then below that, you've got your monthly principal and interest payment. Now caution, that's not including any taxes or an insurance that you've gotta pay. So we'll get to that part in a moment. So then right below there, this is really important. It says, is there a prepayment penalty? Now this consumerfinance.gov option says that there's a prepayment penalty. It's probably meant to just shock everybody. Y'all, there are just, there are no, no prepayment penalty loans anymore, but just in case you need to make sure and see there, here on the sample it says yes. 99.9% .9 of the time that says that's no. But if there was a prepayment penalty, they must disclose it here. So more than likely it's gonna be no. And then right below there, it says balloon payment. Balloon payment is in the old days, I've been doing this for 25 years, so in back, back in the day, mm -hmm. there were payments where it would balloon. A balloon is like a, just think of a hot air balloon that kind of, it's large and it blows up. Like it, your, your loan would balloon after seven years, meaning you go seven years and then it's, it balloons, it's due. Those really don't exist anymore, but that's what a balloon payment means. So make sure that that says no, right under no prepayment penalty, okay? Now, your projected payment is the next section. This is where your principal and interest is, and also your prorated taxes and insurance if you're including it in the mortgage. Now, if you're putting 20% down, you have the option to waive the mortgage, the uh, the uh, tax and insurance monthly. So make sure you look there and that that's what you expect. Down below it says, does this is this included in escrow? So if those boxes are checked yes, it means that you have signed up for an escrow account. 
Now, just a side note, if you put less than 20% down, this account is mandatory. You do not have a choice to waive it. So you have to pay tax and insurance on a monthly basis. Now, down, uh, I, I'm gonna go back up to the payment calculation. It says years one through seven, and then years eight through 30 on the example. This is where if you do have mortgage insurance, uh, which is the, the when you put less than 20% down, you've got mortgage insurance. This is where uh, it will tell you when that mortgage insurance will fall off, okay? So that's why the payment sometimes changes. In the example here, it's $82 a month, and then in year eight, it, there's no mortgage insurance. So every loan is different. It depends how much you start putting down in the, in the, in the, in the beginning, but this is just a, an example, okay? Now, going down to costs at closing, so these are your total costs, including some costs that the seller might be paying. So don't be swayed. You're, you're gonna see the breakdown on page two, but the most important part of this is estimated cash to close, which is your net net, what you're gonna come to closing with, okay? So it's very easy to look at that large number up above of estimated closing costs, but remember we're gonna go through what that includes, and sometimes it's stuff that the seller is also paying. So estimated cash to close, that's a very important number because that's that does very much apply. Now, we're gonna go to page two. This is where the detail is. This is why when you're comparing loans, you wanna ask lenders for a loan estimate because it's all the same format. You know, different lenders have different um, uh, spreadsheets, formats, software. So the loan estimate is the one congruent form that everybody uses that's the same. So make sure you ask for a loan estimate from everyone that you're shopping with. Now on page two, uh, this is how you're gonna compare apples to apples, lender to lender. So section A is, that's where all the lender fees are in section A. So when you're comparing lender to lender, that's where it is. So section A is gonna have any points, any admin fees, anything associated with the lender. Section B are things that um, uh, the, you cannot shop for. The lender chooses these vendors to make these things happen. The money doesn't go directly to the lender, it goes directly to the vendor, the appraisal vendor, the credit vendor, the flood vendor, all of those things. So this is where those are going to be listed as well. So this might be different from lender to lender because they have different vendors that they use. So that is something to compare for. Section C, services that you can shop for. Um, pest inspection, survey fee, title. I can tell you title fees, at least in Texas, all title companies, it's very heavily regulated by the state and so there's really not much shopping that can be done because it's the same from title company to title company, but it is in that section. Um, but th these are fees that the lender does not control. So that is section C on those items. Um, if you flip to the, go to the right side of the page, we're on section E. And in section E, this is where there's um, every county, you've got recording fees with the county. There's certain numbers of pages on some of these documents and every page has a different fee. So this is the lender showing you uh, what these estimated government recording fees are. Section F is prepaid expenses. This, these are things that are being prepaid. They're not closing costs, they're prepaid items. They're usually taxes and insurance and interest that's being paid ahead of time. So the very first one is homeowner's insurance. Now homeowner's insurance is you have to pay one year of insurance upfront at closing. Everybody does, whether you escrow or whether you do not. So let's say um, in this example, the homeowner's insurance is $100 a month. It's about $1,200 per year. So under the prepaids, this person is paying six months of homeowner's insurance um, because depending on what month you're closing, we've got to collect enough months so that next year we can pay these bills annually. So I do have another video on how an escrow account works. You want to make sure and uh, watch that. 
Um, but this is where we pre-collect tax and insurance to start your escrow account so that these accounts can be paid on an annual basis. Again, watch how an escrow account works in my other video. Um, so we've got, again, in section G also, you've got insurance, you've got taxes. These are things that are being pre-collected for the escrow account. Now, mind you, a seller is gonna also pay some of these items. Let's say you're closing in June, middle of the year. We've gotta collect six months because we're gonna to have to pay 12 months you know, in December. We're gonna to have to pay a full year of taxes. So there are gonna be some credits later on that where the seller's money is gonna come in and reimburse. If the closing is in June, they're really paying that full six months of taxes. So again, that's gonna be in how an escrow account works, but all of this is gonna be reconciled in this area. Okay, now H, uh, title, uh, owner's title, section H is the owner's title policy. This is the policy where the seller is giving clear title to the property. It does say optional here. If you're getting a loan, you have to get owner's title insurance. There's no, you can it's not optional. So I'm always perplexed by this form why it says optional. You've got to get it. Um, if you're paying cash, you could choose not to get it but owner's title policy, and in Texas, again, I'll repeat, it is regulated by the State Board of Insurance. So you could go to the State Board of Insurance website and all the premiums and all that um, are there. So in this example, um, that fee is $1,017. Now there's a total, section I totals all the cost, and then in section J, that's where if you have any lender credits, that is something to look out for. Sometimes there are lender credits uh, based on what pricing structure we used. So you wanna look there if there's any lender credits. Then you're calculating your cash to close. That's the section at the very bottom right. And that's where everything is reconciled. Total cost minus your down payment, minus uh, your earnest money deposit. So in this example, they paid $10,000 earnest money deposit. Now, anything from the seller, if the seller is uh, contributing, you know, again, I mentioned their portion of the, the taxes, it's gonna go here in seller credits. It's also gonna be if they're contributing to the title policy, it will go here. A lot of times, at least in Texas, the seller will pay for title. Um, it's a negotiable item. Um, and then they might be giving, you know, a, a repair cost credit, or they might be giving some other type of a credit that was negotiated uh, during the contract. So all of the seller credits will go here in this section. And then your cash to close at the very bottom right of page two is what merges back onto page one. So this is where the reconciliation happens. So page two is a super important page. Now on page three, um, this is something that a lot of people kind of overlook. They're kind of glazed over by the time they get to page two. But page three uh, is got some really good information uh, on some comparisons. It shows you that in the first five years, how much you're gonna pay in interest if you never make an extra payment and what percent that is. Uh, it also talks about the APR. So APR is annual percentage rate. It is the cost of the, your loan for the first year because you had closing costs on page two to get to page three, right? So you didn't just borrow $100,000, you borrowed 100,000 plus, you had closing costs associated with that. So this is a numerical value. It is not the interest rate that's calculating your payment every month. Um, so in this particular, um, example, the interest rate is 3.875 on this example. The APR is higher than that, it's 4.274, but remember that's because it includes all the closing costs you had to pay to get to that moment. But the monthly payment for any individual is that 3.875 that was disclosed on page one of the form, okay? We've got another video about APR and you can Google that and, and read up more about what APR is, but that is not your interest rate on your mortgage note, okay? It's the lower number. Um, so uh, there's other definitions here. Is the loan assumable? Most loans are not assumable unless it's an FHA or a VA loan. Um, and it talks about the late payment. It talks about if you pay 15 days or more late, you'll be assessed a late fee. Um, and it talks about, also very important about the servicing of the loan. Does the lender intend to service or not? Most lenders can't guarantee you that these days, even the big ones. Just, just know that it's, 
servicing of the loan is just a change where your payment goes. None of the terms can ever change. It's really not a big deal. Um, but this is where you would see all, everything is disclosed on this closing disclosure. So you can use this form to compare between lenders. It's a lot of information that we've gone over. So I hope that you got a lot of detail. If you have any questions, let us know. If you're in Texas, give us a call and we will talk to you soon. Legacy Mutual Mortgage is an equal housing opportunity lender. The opinions expressed here do not reflect those of Legacy Mutual Mortgage.